So welcome to this week's video. I'm gonna be talking about the basics of having a powerful communication set. And these basics are all you really need to really get started solidly. And if you can get good at these, you can become a good communicator fast. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'm also going to share with you one little secret that will, that will help you to grow in this area much faster. Most guys screw this up and it takes them forever to learn this stuff because of this one little thing. So make sure to stay at the end. And also this will group perfectly with my last week's video. Make sure to check it out on how to get good at approaching and how to get good at communication uh, with approaching, getting a conversation started while also desensitizing your fear of sex and sexuality and intimacy. And so many guys are afraid to escalate. They're afraid to move forward. And that's what this really works for you. So let's dive right in. Number one, you have to be good at being proactive and not reactive. A lot of guys are really bad at being proactive and they're very reactive. And we're gonna cover the basics of this. Now, if you haven't read my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction, I cover a whole chapter on being proactive versus reactive and there's exercises that go with this. Make sure to check that out if you haven't already. And we'll put a link in here somewhere. So let's dive in a little deeper. What is proactive? versus reactive. Well, reactive, if we start with that, that's what most guys are. And you don't have to be great at this. 10% better can make a huge difference. Reactive is when you are running from the tension. You guys know how much I love to talk about tension. Well, most guys, what happens is a little tension gets, gets into the conversation, which is natural when you're meeting somebody new. They challenge you, they test you, they play with you. There's teasing, there's bantering. It's what makes the, makes the conversation fun. And most guys, especially nice guys, and I, I'm a recovering nice guy, wanna get rid of all the tension. We feel the tension rising, and instead of playing with the tension, dancing with the tension, having fun with the tension in a relaxed way, the key is to be relaxed down the front of your body, relax in the heart, relax in the stomach, relax all these little muscles. It makes you feel a lot more relaxed because the subcommunication in your face changes and, and your body language changes when you're relaxed. That when you're reactive in that area and then you tense up up here, it makes you feel insecure. It makes you feel like you're hiding something to them. So hey, let's say you're in a conversation, she tests you, she teases you, she calls you. Let's say she just calls you, you're such a dork. And then you're like, you're like, is that good? Is that bad? Because you're a nice guy. Or you want to say something back. It's like, this is where I'm supposed to be bantery. And you're like, oh, yeah, well, you're a goofball. And you go up to your head and she can feel that reactiveness. That kind of brings you down the totem pole a little bit. Um, and most nice guys are always trying to get rid of the tension. Another good example is you're going out to dinner. It's as simple as, hey, where do you want to go to dinner? And she asks you. And instead of giving a real response... Instead of relaxing in your body and saying something like, uh, you know what, I know this amazing Italian restaurant. Let's, you, want to, you want Italian, I can tell. Let's go get Italian tonight. And owning it, the, the guy gets up into his head a little bit, gets a little nervous because he doesn't want to screw up. And he's like, um, well, where do you want to go to dinner? I, you know, I just want to go where you want to go. That's reactive. That's a perfect example. If she teases you and calls you a dork and then you're like, well, you're a, you're a goofball. And you hear the, hear the voice go up and you feel the tightening in the front of my body. Again, that's reactive. Proactive is staying solid in the tension, staying comfortable in the tension, relax. And even more so relaxing in, into the, the guts relax, like the muscles around these, these uh, rib cage right here, relaxed and the, uh, the turn ons relaxed down the low part of the body around the hips. And there's a sense of playfulness. And when she says something to you, like you're a dork, you say, well, you're a goofball. And if you're not careful, I'm gonna come over there and spank you. And you own that energy, that's really powerful. That's proactive. Proactive is when you take charge and it's gonna affect all the other energies that we work with. So as we look, as we move forward, as you get more comfortable staying relaxed in this part of your body, all the way down to your hips, through your legs, and staying aware of your own body, let's say 80% of the time, 20% on her, 80% awareness on what your body's feeling in relationship to her, you're gonna do so much better. So doing move uh, practices where you just practice feeling your body, walking around, enjoying your body, learning to walk in your body, simple as that, can really make a big difference. Walking down the street and just, what do my legs feel like? What do my hips feel like? When I'm talking to my buddy, you know, how does it make me feel in my body? Can I feel my heart? Can I feel my stomach? Can I feel my legs? That has a huge difference. It teaches you to keep your awareness on relaxing your body rather than tightening it up. So that's proactivity. Now, as part of proactivity, there's some basics you want to follow. Don't overly explain things. Don't be so uh, analytical. You know, be more playful. Be relaxed. Analytical people tend to be overly needy. They're trying to explain things to get rid of the tension to make everybody happy. Uh, they're trying to be right. They're trying to be smart. They're not relaxed in their body. That's why they're overly analytical usually. So that guy that's always like, 
well, I've got all the data for everything. Don't be that guy. Another thing you don't want to be is overly dramatic. This is, this is more rare in men and more common in, in females, but it does happen. Guys that are overly, oh, I can't believe that happened. Oh, that's horrible. Or you're such a dork. And there's this big drama, dramatic, like overplay of the energy versus just tapping her on the arm and going, you're such a dork. Make sure the energy is relaxed and flowing between you and her. Okay. Another thing you might want to do is work on your listening skills. Part of proactivity is not overly speaking, but learning to ask all the right questions, pull her out, which we're going to get to the next part of that in a moment. But the more you relax and, and ask questions and then really listen, which means feeling her emotions when she speaks, being present for her emotions, which comes back to feeling the core of your body. That's part of being proactive. The more she's going to feel heard, the more she's going to feel seen, especially when she says stuff that creates tension. Maybe she disagrees with you. Maybe she teases you and you just take it in. You relax into it and you really feel her desire to play with you and flirt with you versus actually trying to be mad at you. That can be huge as far as moving the energy forward. That's often what it is. A girl's trying to flirt and the guy's just not getting it. Um, I always love to tell this story about this client I had once that thought girls weren't attracted to him. He went up and talked to this girl. And he came back and said, see, she's not attracted to me. And I said, well, what did she say to you? And he said, well, she looked at me and said, I think you're a player and I'm not going to sleep with you. And I, I said, did you bring up sex to her? And he said, no. And I said, she was flirting with you. So think about that, guys. If he was relaxed in his body and he could feel it, I could actually see her looking over, by the way, wondering where he went. But if he was relaxed in his body, he would have felt that turn on and that play and he could have played back. So again, by being relaxed in your body, feeling her emotions, you become more receptive to what she's feeling in her body by feeling it in your body and what she's saying. OK, another good one to help you be not too overly uh, reactive and to stay proactive is to be able to break rapport now and then. So for a lot of guys, when a girl's really connected to them, they don't want to ruin that rapport. They want to stay in a flow with her. And so they become super attentive. And it could be too much, too much for you, too much for her. Overly trying to stay connected to a girl is also a sign of reactivity. So every once in a while, if you feel yourself starting to lean in too much, becoming overly wanting the connection with her, wanting to impress her, just casually look away and look at something else. Like there's a piece of artwork over here. I'm just looking at it. I'm going to take it in. I'm going to fully feel it and let her go for a moment. Really enjoy it. Maybe just feel her a little bit, 10% and then come back to her. It's kind of like a reset for me. Or I might look off in the distance at the uh, sunset that's going on out there and just enjoy that for a moment, take it in, let it kind of inspire me, and then come back and reconnect to her again. And uh, don't be afraid to do that on occasion. It's a great reset. If you're getting needy, if you're getting bored, if you're getting uh, reactive, like I said, uh, you're starting to want her validation, that's a great time to do that and then come back and start again. So this helps you with proactivity. This is the basics of playing with proactivity. You can work on this a little bit at a time, practice with your friends, practice uh, when you're doing your approaches from last week's video, and within no time at all, you'll get much, much better. Step number two out of the three that we're gonna talk about today is going to be developing curiosity and appreciation, and joy, the upper emotions. Can you really, truly be curious about the questions you ask her? Can you, be, can you have appreciation for her even when you're teasing her? Can you have joy? Can you have these upper emotions of fun um, even when you're bantering back and forth? This is really important. See, when I ask a woman a question, I actually access real curiosity. I want to know the answer. I don't try to fake curiosity. So many guys try to fake curiosity. Don't fake it. You need to really be curious. So if you don't know what curiosity feels like, go learn. Find stuff you're truly curious about and see if you can remember it in your body. And then as you start to feel it, start learning to call it up at will. Walk around and just ask people when you're practicing, talking to people and socializing, um, ask them random questions from that place of curiosity. Practice it with your friends. See if you can pull it up at will and just relax into it. And you will eventually be able to do it. I used to access curiosity all the time. I'd find something I was curious about. I just notice where I feel it in my body. And I'd be like, oh, there's something right here. What does that feel like? Can I let that go? Can I come back and think about that same question again? Can I let it go? Can I think about it again? Now can I, can I associate it with something else? And then pretty soon I'd ask my friend, hey, you know, that's an interesting shirt. Where, where'd you get that? And I could really let that idea in and be curious about it. And the more you can do that, the easier it'll be in conversations. Because a lot of guys, when they first start out, 
they don't know what curiosity feels like because they're too in their heads. They're thinking too much. So if you actually take time to explore the feeling of curiosity and ask questions of random strangers from curiosity, your friends from curiosity, your family from curiosity, when you get in front of that beautiful woman you really like, it'll be that much easier to be curious. Do the same thing with appreciation. Do the same thing with joy. Um, and then if you want to take it a notch deeper, do the same thing with banter. Tease her, call her a dork, call her trouble, call her goofball. You know, you're such a goofball, but have appreciation when you do it. Why are you such a dork? And see if you can access real curiosity or appreciation. Play with her a little bit, but be a little incongruent there. You're calling her a dork, but you know, put, that's a push. And then you're pulling her in with curiosity. And, on the, and if you learn to do pushes and pulls this way, they're so much more fun and so much more powerful. And I do have a good video on pushes and pulls that you can access too if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Because, because honestly, most nice guys, and we get a lot of nice guys on this channel, err on the side of too many um, uh, pulls, like compliments, and not enough pushes. So two pushes to a pull is a good formula to keep with this. Okay, so the next thing is say less and listen more. I said this earlier, I'm just going back to it again. If you can actually access curiosity, you can start saying less and listening more and really again, just feeling what she's feeling, noticing when she says this one word, she was a little sad when she said that. Be curious about it. Well, you know that you seemed a little sad when you said that. Tell me more about that. Or wow, you go, you're feisty when you talk about that. You're such a troublemaker. You know, start to notice where the depth of the conversation is, where the emotion of the conversation is, and don't be afraid to do those pushes. Don't be afraid to, to ask deeper questions that challenge her. Don't be afraid to to do that because that leads to the next thing we're going to talk about. So that's step number two. Step number three is take charge and be a leader. And I think that taking charge and being a leader for men on dating is a really misunderstood thing. They really think that means they have to do everything. Guys say this to me all the time. Well, I'm the man, as a man, why do I have to do everything? You don't. <laughs> Actually, being a really masculine man, you might actually find sometimes you do a lot less, a lot less because what happens with nice guys is nice guys think they have to do everything because by being a leader, I have to go out and make the date happen. I have to make this happen. I have to make that happen. If we're making dinner, I have to help prepare dinner. I want to take charge of everything to make sure that everything gets done so she's happy. And that can really burn you out. And a really good leader doesn't do that. What a really good leader does, and I'm going to go back to my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction, and refer to the container. The container is so powerful. What a really good leader does is he creates a solid container for their experience together. They're going on a date. Yeah, he creates the framework for the date. He picks her up. He takes her out. But within that, he creates a flow. And what I mean by that, he channels things into form. She's getting dressed up. She wants to flow for him. So he might want to create a space where she can flow and show off her dress and he can just witness it. She can move and toss her hair for him and he can sit back and relax. If she wants to do something for him, he can create a space for her to do that, a safe space for her to do that in her feminine, where she can make him a dinner, where she can give him a massage, where, she, where he can even ask, you know, I'd love it if you touch me right here. That's, oh, that feels so good, baby. That's so sexy. You can do, do a little bit more. Use two hands. And, uh, and she'll giggle and she'll laugh and you'll be like, oh, you're doing a really good job. And um, if you keep doing, if you don't do a good job, I'm going to come back there and spank you. And now you give her space to do stuff for you. You can even give her jobs to do. If you've been doing a bunch now, tell her to do something. I really appreciate it if you did this. Can you take care of this for me? And then, or if you want to be more on the push side, get over there and take care of that. You know what? You know, and uh, and then and then she'll go what? And, you, and then you just kind of play with it and you tease her from there. Don't make me come over there and spank you. I guess I'm stuck on the spanking one right now. I've used that one a lot, if you guys can't tell, it's a lot of fun. Um, and you can play with that and, and dance with that energy and have fun with that energy and then just kind of flow with it. So some of the qualities that go with it is channeling, the, uh, containing, grounding the energy, which is gonna help you not be reactive, channeling things, giving her jobs to do, you jobs to do, flowing with the container, um, decisiveness, not hesitating for too long, uh, I think about Zan, when Zan told me what he loves to do with his wife, he says, we, we love to go to the movies. But in reality, I just love spending time with her. I love being with her. And he said, so when we're going to go to the movies, I don't really care what movie we see. I like cuddling up with my girl. And he goes, so I'll look at her and I'll go, hey, baby, what, what movie do you want to go see? And the moment I see the littlest bit of hesitation, he says, he says I immediately say, I just, I just immediately decide what the movie is. I, I can tell she doesn't want to decide. So she won't say anything. And I'll go, okay perfect. Let's go see the new Batman movie. 
And she goes, okay, and because she just wants to spend time with me, and then we just end up hanging out in the theater, holding hands together, watching a movie together, or cuddling, or whatever they do. But you get the idea. He's not afraid to ask a question. He's not afraid to ask her opinion, but he sees that hesitation. He just makes decisions, moves forward confidently. And sometimes it's just time just to make the decision first. You know there's a good restaurant you've been wanting to go to for weeks. You know what? We're going to this restaurant. It's great. Let's, let's go check it out. I know you're going to love it. And if you don't love it, uh, we'll find another one next week. Don't worry about it. And you just kind of move on and you go for it. So a decisive man is an attractive man. And uh, grabbing a girl's hand, you're at the bar, you're flirting with her and saying, hey, let's go over here and get a, and hang out at this part of the bar. It's quieter. I can talk. I want to get to know you better. And I did that the other day. I was talking to somebody and I said, I grabbed her by the hand and I said, hey, come over here. I want to, I want to talk to you for a minute. She went, what? And I said, just I walked her through the bar to a quieter section, sat down. And I said, I wanted to go over here where we can actually really talk after we sat down because there was so much noise where we were at, it just wasn't working. And so that decisiveness, that leading energy is so powerful. Another fun thing you can do is ask her for a favor, especially if you just met her. Let's say you're at the bar and uh, you got some, you got your jacket sitting there and, and you've been talking. Say, hey, can you watch my jacket while I run to the bathroom? Uh, can you watch my whatever, whatever you've got? This, these, these favors, when you ask for a favor, watch my drink, make sure nobody puts a roofie in it, something like that. Uh, when you ask these favors, it's a, it starts to create a bond between two people. It feels like you've known each other longer and it creates a sense of connection because you're help, he, she's helping you out and that's something she typically does for somebody she's closer to. So again, ask her for a favor, ask her to do things, ask her to take action. You know, um, I've asked girls to massage my hand, give me a quick massage on the shoulder. I talked about that one earlier. I've asked them to watch my drink. Uh, I, and what people love to do is when they start to do favors for other people, they're going to justify that action as in this is a cool guy, this is somebody I want to hang out with. And then from there, you can say, hey, let's move over to this other section of the bar and sit by the fire and get to know each other. And she's more likely to go as she gets more comfortable and gets to know you a little bit better. Because, and that's really what you're doing. You're building a sense of trust. You're a good guy. If you're a really good guy, you open up, you're non-reactive, you're proactive, you're leading well, you're curious, you're playing with appreciation. Yeah, she's going to trust you. She's going to go with you. She's going to have a good time with you because that's the type of guy that you have a good time with. So you got three areas that we covered there and they're powerful areas. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over one more thing that's really important here in a moment. Number one is be proactive. Number two, is be curious, appreciative, access your higher emotion. Uh, number three is take charge and be a leader. And if you really work on these three areas in all your conversations, it's gonna change the way you converse. It's the basics of really creating a nice space for conversation. And the third thing that I wanna talk about is that a lot of nice guys err on the side of being too cautious. They're one foot in, one foot out. This is so common and so bad. So you go to do something that, like this, like you're going to go be decisive and you hesitate a little bit. That's actually reactivity, but you hesitate a little bit. You don't want to, you don't want to take too much risk. Like, should I push it? And that hesitation causes a negative response typically, or a hesitant response in return. Then a lot of nice guys say, well, this doesn't work. This isn't going to work. This, I tried it. It doesn't work. We tried it once and it didn't work and you didn't own it, that's number two, you didn't really own it. So when you try these things, you have to really commit to taking them on fully and doing them multiple times, at least you know, practice it for a while and give yourself a real world experience of applying these principles before uh, you ever even consider giving up on them. And trust me, there's no reason to give up on them. They're all gonna work for you in the end. So really go out, apply it, stick to it, work with it, and commit 100%. The 100% commitment totally changes the results. You might screw up at first and go too far, but by going too far and pushing too hard through maybe the leading portion or the proactivity portion, you'll start to quickly calibrate back and find a nice balance. And that's the mistake everybody makes. When you, when you don't push far enough, it's really hard to find it, it, you got, it. It's really hard to find the balance. It takes a lot longer. It's going a little too far, and then coming back really creates that sense of balance in all this stuff that you're learning. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's a it's a fun video, and I want you to definitely check out uh, my last week's video that I did on desensitizing to approaching, and at the same time desensitizing to sexual shame and intimacy. How you do them in conjunction with with each other, and becoming a powerful communicator as you move forward in life, a powerful communicator that's not afraid of his sexuality as a man and not afraid of sex. That video, uh, we'll put a link to the video right here. 
and uh, make sure to check it out because to me, I think if you combine this video with that video, you can build some really powerful communication skills. And also there's one more video that we talked about in here that you should check out. And that's my video on push poles, playing with push pull energy and communication, that playfulness. Check that out too if you wanna to learn more about that because that can be huge too. And you put all this together, man, you're gonna become unstoppable in no time. And that's what you really want, right? You want to become unstoppable, free from outcome, flowing, which is what attracts the most confident, beautiful women. It literally changes the way you look to them because your subcommunication radically changes. So uh, I love sharing all this information with you. Make sure to like, uh, if you haven't liked, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share, make sure to comment in the video. Your comments are really important to me. I've been reading them a lot lately, really taking them in. And uh, remember, only the confident really, but I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a beautiful day.